another stake in my hard world. And won't you mock this old unfurled? All I can do is laugh with you and fall in love with the color blue. Eavesdropping on this conversation between fresh coffee and the snow outside, she calls and interrupts this voyeur voyage that has been my life to remind me that the cold I feel when walking barefoot in winter is not my feet's pain, but the earth screaming by such intrusions of out-of-season warmth. And so we, in all our cleverness, invent things like shoes and scarves and fresh coffee as a way to silence these horrific outbursts. We secretly thumb our heart noses at nature's dogma with the dogma of our civility, and it becomes a cacophony of dogmas, and this is beautiful in its own dogmatic way. Meanwhile, the sidewalk is a planet. The people keep walking by just outside my window, and it's a window that will soon no longer be my window, so I must cherish this brief moments as they pass before my eyes. It makes me cry all these goodbyes. Where did they go? They melt into the snow alongside the forgotten gloves, cigarette butts, and broken umbrellas. So long, fellas, I bid adieu to all of you. Just beyond the horizon of calendar, the world, and a bundled motion of bundles of desires, inside bundles of nerves, inside bundles of flesh, inside bundles of clothes, inside bundles of time, dialogue with the bundles of particles that move this bundle of ether that touch the bundles of my nerves that are the bundles of my eye that lead to this bundle brain that feeds the bundle that is my heart that dances with this bundle soul. And it all becomes this unentangleable entanglement and we must become kittens willing to play with such bundles, bouncing them off walls, not afraid of this curiosity that most certainly will kill us all. Meanwhile, the sidewalk is frozen and the people keep walking by just outside my window. It is a window that will soon no longer be my window, but I must cherish these brief moments as they pass before my eye. It makes me cry all these goodbyes. Where do they go? They melt into the snow alongside forgotten gloves, cigarette butts, and broken umbrellas. So long, fellas, I bid adieu to all of you. And there are no trees from this view, but I imagine there is, and am reminded of the trees of my childhood most especially the one in my backyard that taught me about orgasms. I would hang from the longest branch, posing this great question to God from the lips of my tiny scrotum, and the tree would slowly bow as I grew taller, heavier. Of course, God was silent. As I returned every day to hang and ask this question to the Lord, the branch became longer, weaker, as I grew taller and heavier. One day, the branch was abruptly cut away by my father. It had grown too long and was weary from all this weight that I had placed upon its compassionate reach. I learned that day the important lesson of the connection between pruning and pleasure. Afraid that the melody was forgotten, I had learned to let go of such fickle fleas. These songs, nothing but tiny bugs biting me, I scratched to eliminate the irritation and apply certain creams to make the swelling subside, but my love for the scabs I am unable to hide, and secretly I am thankful to have a creature that wants to place its mouth on me so that its belly can become plump from the nectar I have to offer. Drink some coffee and tell yourself it's not quite time for wine. She never was mine. Bathe yourself with bleach so the skin might burn away. Maybe then you'll see your heart today. Pile up the bricks and prepare for one more lick. The callus holds as we grow old. But inside of these scars, behind these mango bars, we have front row seats to the creation of stars.